Hello everyone, Erwan from Motion VFX. In this tutorial, we will learn how to create an opening title using 3D object with the end drawing render. Let's have a look on the final project. In Motion, we'll start from scratch the example with the two ends. First, we will import an old paper texture. I will click on the import button and select my picture. Motion fits automatically the picture inside the project. I will increase the size parameter to fill completely the picture inside the project area. I will open the project pane. Then I will rename the group as background. To animate the texture, I will add a video file, a ink texture. I will use the compositing elements bundle from Motion VFX. And to be accurate, I will use the elements from the M Splatter 4K pack. Inside, you will find many video animations like ink, blood, drips, elements. Here, I will use one ink animation. To get the right render, I will open the Properties tab and play with the blending modes. Add mode doesn't work well. To get a nice result, the best mode is Overlay. Like this. Ok, the background texture is done, let's add some 3D elements. I will create a new group and name it 3D. I will add the first 3D end. It will be an USDZ model. This model is coming from Sketchfab. It's a free model and you will find the link in the description of this video. First, I will increase the size. I will quickly rotate and position the end. I will create a group and name it end. It will be easier to use it for an offset animation if needed. To get the end drawing render, we should play with the texture or the shaders of the 3D models. But in this case, with the USDZ model, we don't have many controls. So let's find a solution with the motion tools. If we go to the filters library and the stylized category, we will have access to some nice filters, like the line art filter. I will apply the line art filter to the 3D group, like this. As you can see, the filter is limited by the size of the end layer. To get rid of this limitation, you just have to switch the group to the 3D mode by clicking on this icon. Ok, so now let's focus on the line art parameters. There are two main parameters, the threshold and the smoothness. By default, the result is not really convincing. Let's decrease the value of the smoothness to zero and the threshold near zero. As you can see, a low value adds more details on the hand. By using the slider, I can't get below 0.01. But it is possible to go below by typing the value like 0.004 for example. Now I've got a better result. The only thing is that I've got the white background. Again, the solution will be using blending modes. I will select the group and in the properties tab, I will switch the blending mode to add for a test. Not the result I want. In fact, linear burn mode will give us the best result. Ok, we have the first hand, the human hand. Let's add a new one, a robot one. To do so, I will create a new group and name it Robot Hand. The 3D model I've got is not a USDZ model, but an OBG file in order to get more controls. To be able to import OBG file inside Motion, I will use the MO2 plugins from Motion VFX. You will find MO2 in the Generators library inside the Motion VFX category, and I will drag it inside the group. Ok, let's import the OBG file. I will click on the Add button, then Model. By default, MO2 provides many 3D models. Motion VFX also provides extra packages on the website, like the Cyberpunk bundle, for example. In this case, I will use the Nanother free model from Sketchfab. As always, the link is in the description. So I will import the OBG file. I will rename it. Create a new category inside the library 
and select the legacy texture workflow as I've got material file linked to the 3D model. Okay, I will get down the end a little bit. Let's have a look at the model. Nice. First, I need to remove the gradient background to see our other elements. To do so, in the scene settings, you will find background. I will select it, and in the parameters, I will switch the type from gradient to alpha channel. Perfect, we can see our background and the human hand. I will quickly position the hand over the first one. And let's move the robot's hand into the 3D group. As you can see, we don't have the same result as the previous one. The reason is that MO2 apply by default post effects, like motion blur, bloom, lens aberration, grain, and many more. So in the render settings, you can deactivate each post effects, or to get it faster, here are tips, you just have to switch from the beauty mode to the edit mode by clicking on the icon. That's better. Nice. Let's get a better position. Like this. The great advantage using MO2 is the fact that you have many controls on the 3D object. In this case, I can get access to the materials. It will be very useful to fine-tune the look of the 3D model. For example, I will test various materials and see in real time the final result in motion. Depending on the material, the look can completely change. You can also modify various parameters of the material, like the metalness, the roughness, or the illuminance, in order to get the look you want. Okay, I've got my two ends, let's get the right position and animate them. To get a smooth animation, I will use a Bezier interpolation. To do so, select Show Keyframe Editor to display your animation curves. First, I will frame the complete animation by clicking on this icon. Then I will select Interpolation and switch to Bezier. So both keyframes will have tangents that will smooth the start and the end of the animations. I will do the same for the robot's hand, but this time inside MO2. I can see that I've got a little perspective issue with the thumb. As I am in MO2, it will be very easy to correct this, as I can have access to the thumb control directly inside MO2. So I will do a small adjustment with the rotation parameter. I will also smooth the in and out animations by using the Bezier curves and the tangents. Okay, we have our animations. Let's add the title. I will create a new group and name it Title.
Of course, I can use motion to create nice titles animations, but I already know which title animation I want. The problem is that this title animation is a Final Cut Pro title. Motion VFX provides many bundles with a ton of nice animations titles, like the M Title Cinematic Pack, but these titles animations are exclusive to Final Cut Pro. As you will see, it's not a big issue. All these titles were created inside Motion by our talented designers. So by doing a right click on the titles, you can open it in Motion, like this. So now it's really easy to select the content group and copy this group. And now I can paste it inside our project. I can go inside and modify the text. I will get the color from the hands elements. I will move the group at the right position. And it's done. Quick and easy. Last detail, I would like to add some dirt. I will create a new group and call it dirt. I will import a texture coming from the MDIRT pack from Motion VFX. MDIRT contains dozens of textures. I will import this one. As usual, I will modify the blending mode. Add is OK, but I would like to have a black texture, not white. So it's why I will use the Subtract Blending mode like this. I will increase slightly the size. I will also create a small animation to match with the motion hands. Okay, perfect. I will select every group and group them. I will name this group Master and I will use it to color correct the project. I will use the MFIM look plugin. I will open the presets library and test various presets. I will select this one, the laser beam preset, and I will custom it. I will remove the lens flare, the chromatic aberration, and the less distortion. I will reduce uh, just a little bit the letterbox. Let's see the final result. One more thing with a chess example in order to give you an extra tips and tricks. As you can see, I've kept almost the same setup hierarchy for all the examples. With the chest 3D model, I've got a more complex 3D object with various textures with the board and the chest pieces. So it's more difficult to adjust the line art filter to get a nice result for all the elements. For example, here I'm missing some details on the size of the board and on some pieces. The lack of these details means that some parts are too dark. So don't hesitate to add a light to get more details. Inside MO2, it's really easy to add one or two lights like this. So now I've got a better result with more details. Also, this 3D model is a FBX file. So you can modify the position of various pieces on the board and you can animate them to create some interaction and life into the scene. Here I can animate the black tower by adjusting the X position. I will smooth the animation and add some acceleration by using the tangent Bezier curves like this. By default, the tangents are linked. To break this link, you will have to press the control key and move the tangent.
and it's done. Okay, that's all. I hope this tutorial will give you some ideas for future projects. To know more about our compositing elements bundles, you just have to go to the Motion VFX website. And to learn more about MO2 and all the plugins, don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Thanks for watching. Ciao, ciao. Bye bye.